look at the introduction to ARCHICAD. How first do we set up a page? How do we set up a new file? In order to get a new file that's clear of all of the template information, which can make using ARCHICAD a little bit daunting at first, if we go up to the file, new, and if we hold down the Alt key, which is usually beside your space bar, we'll be able to change new to new and reset all. Now also you'll see that we have the keyboard shortcuts. I'm not going to teach you those. I'm only going to show you through the file menu just so you can find it and see what I'm doing. Otherwise you wouldn't get to see it. New and reset all. And that's going to get rid of some of the, the silly information or the unwanted information when we're trying to keep the page clean and simple. Great. So now we see that in our navigator, which is this box on the right hand side, there's less stuff. They're pretty much empty. The templates are useful, but we'll get to those later. Hopefully your screen will look similar to mine, except maybe that I've got a grid. I don't really like seeing that grid, so we can turn that off by going View, Grid Display. That will turn that off. Now we're going to start this process today using ARCHICAD in its most basic purposes. On the left-hand side of ARCHICAD, we have our toolbar. And our toolbar is made up of select, which is arrow and marquee, so we can select existing elements. Design, which is the common 3D tools. I'll just minimize this now. We have document, which is the common 2D tools. And then we have a file called more, which is a few of the extra 3D tools and a few of the extra 2D tools. And they're put under more because it's, I guess, assume that we're not going to use them as much, but we will very commonly at the moment particularly be using the tool in here called the spline tool. So between the document tools which is 2D and the more tools for some of the others. Now we're going to import these logos which are provided for you in the P drive which is up on the board. Three different logos we've got something just to trace or copy. Now of course this is these contain copyright requirements and so you need to be entitled to use these. Um, we're just using it as a class exercise. Of course you can create your own logo as well. So let's work with the, the AIA. So if you're an architect and a member of the Australian Institute of Architects then on your drawings on your title block you will want to get a copy of this maybe to show that you are a member and we're going to look at how to use this as a vector based file meaning that um, we're going to create it using the line tools and the other tools that we can find in ARCHICAD. Now you might have seen there I did that quite quickly and didn't tell you what I was doing. In ARCHICAD we can simply drag and drop drawings from a folder onto our page. Now I'm just dro dropping this onto a story. This is story zero. Now if this was a PDF and if we were doing this maybe with product literature, so maybe Boral has a manual on their bricks or their tiles or something else that they make and they're giving you details, standard architectural building details, they might provide it to you as a PDF, meaning that you can drag and drop and explode and turn that into lines which is very, very handy, very, very useful. Thank you for all the companies that do that. However, we won't always have files like this. For instance, if we go edit, reshape, explode, we're going to find that if it's only a picture-based file, there's nothing to explode. It's not a vector-based file. And as far as I'm aware, the ARCHICAD can't turn a, a raster into a vector. It doesn't have that capability. Some other programs do. But we're just going to use this to trace as an exercise. Now the scale is not all that important. We could change the scale of this. Just for now I'll just grab my line tool and I'll zoom in. I'll just measure the, the top bar of this column. We see that this represents as 1028 or 1030. Now this is talking in millimeters, so that means that that is a meter long. When we're drawing in CAD, we're drawing in real size. We're drawing at a scale of one to one. But the representation 
is going to get reduced so we can eventually place it on a drawing. So down the bottom of my screen, we see here that it says 1 to 100. Now it doesn't really matter what I'm drawing, I can always change the scale later, or I can always reduce the scale representation to eventually place this onto a layout for part of my title block perhaps. But for now, we'll just leave it like it is. So we've dragged it and dropped it. Now to trace it, it's really easy if we can see what we're tracing or see over what we're tracing. There's a few different ways to do that. The simplest way at the moment is we're going to choose the line tool and instead of choosing a, a black line, I'm going to change this to a, a red line. To zoom in, I'm going to use the scroll on my mouse. When we're zooming, if I want to zoom into an area, I keep my cursor there and then I scroll in. To zoom out, I do the opposite. So if something is over the side of my page and I want to see that, if I hover my mouse over that edge and zoom out, it always stays on the outside of my page. If I want to zoom out and see more information, then what I do is I move my cursor away from the middle of the page and that allows to center what I'm trying to see and then it allows me to zoom in again. So there's different ways to do this. Of course, we have the ability to zoom in over an area using the plus or minus tool. This little magnifying glass down the bottom is fit to window. So whatever we've got on our drawing, so let's just draw a couple of quick lines. And if we got a line all the way over here, then if I fit to window, it's going to show everything on my drawing. So we have to be very careful where we're drawing so we don't end up with funny zooms. Fit to window again. Now it's brought us back to the middle. We're going to trace over this drawing using the different tools that we have. So let's go back to that line tool. We're going to trace. I'm going to hold shift to restrain the line to keep it horizontal. Now when I hold shift, it snaps straight away to the closest axis point. Now these have snap references in ARCHICAD. So if I go around this circle in an anti-clockwise direction, we'll see that this blue dashed line appears at 45 degrees. And if I hold shift, it'll snap to that. If I move up, we'll see a line 90 degrees. If I hold shift, it'll snap to that. So it'll snap to whatever snap points I have on. If I go to view, we see that there are snap grids and I can go into those grid display and choose guideline options, whatever angles I want to snap to. So I could snap to 15 degrees or to 5 degrees. And of course, if we're drawing something that's constantly on that angle, that might be a smart way of working. At the moment, it's just going to keep to standard 45 degrees. So to draw a line, I'm going to move in the direction that I want to draw, just roughly. I'm going to hold shift in this case to keep it straight and then I'm going to type in a distance. I could either guess, just click, or if I wanted to be a little bit more particular, we see that there is a word distance and it's a little bit bolder. If I, while holding shift, press the D button or the R button, which stands for radius, that will bring up the dimension as a highlighted area and then I could type in any number I wanted to. In this case, I'll type in 1030, just to make that more exact. And to finish this, I'm just going to press Enter. Now, I'm showing you this very, very slowly. A bit pedantic. There's multiple ways to do this. Let's try this again. To draw another line, I'm going to click on one of the endpoints. So I'm going to hover over to where that line started. So you'll see that my mouse or my cursor changes from a crosshair to a tick when I'm hovering over the edge. That way I know that I'm exactly in the right place. When we're drawing by hand, it's down to our eye. When we're drawing with CAD, because I could zoom and zoom and zoom and zoom forever, there is no value in guessing. I always have to know exactly where that endpoint is. 
And if I do this cleanly and well to begin with, it's going to make my life a lot simpler as we go on. Now, maybe I don't know how long this line is, and so I'm going to show you multiple different ways. I'm going to draw this longer than it needs to be. I'm not going to bother typing in a value. I'm just going to use this 315 degree reference and click. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to click on that point. Now I'm going to use the 225 degree reference. Again, it's locked me in. I could hold shift, click. And now I'm going to use another tool in order to, rather than redrawing a line, if we've already got a, a line drawn, why redraw? Let's just use what we've already got. So to select this line, I'm going to use my arrow tool. Now, one thing you just have to be careful of, if you've got something on your page, maybe it's a slab or maybe it's a picture, if you click on that picture or on that element, on that slab, with this magnet on, which is called the quick selection tool, it will automatically click on it without clicking on an edge. If I click on this line, I can select it in the same way. Now, you might find that quick selection very handy or you might find it a little bit frustrating. I'm just going to show you how to turn it off. Just click where it's grey, that will turn that off, which means now the only way to click this box that we've been drawing or this drawing is to click on one of these black dots. We call these nodes or grab points and this allows us to move or edit or manipulate any part of the drawing. Now the line of course has the same thing, it has these black dots. So knowing where these black dots are is helpful and you'll learn that as you go through the process. Generally speaking we're going to have those black dots on the edges or the ends and, and sometimes in the middle. Now if we don't know where that black dot is, how do we select the picture? If we use a box selection method, so I click once, draw a box, click again. If we have any of those black dots within that box and we're using the partial elements selection, that'll help us find it. So we're not going to make too many changes at the moment just to keep it simple so we can draw. Now to select that red line, let's do that again. Let's click on that red line around the top and we're going to drag a copy. To find our move commands, we could go edit, move, and then we see that we've got drag, rotate, mirror, elevate, drag a copy, rotate a copy, mirror a copy, and then we've got multiple copies. So this is move the original, create one copy, or create multiple copies. We can also find these commands by right clicking once we've selected an item. Right click, move, and our move commands. And then later on in this course I'm going to show you how to create your own toolboxes that also have these commands, so instead of having to use the menu commands, we can just click on a box once. So to create this drag, right click, move, drag a copy because I don't want to move the original, move this down so it's 120 away from the original, I'm just making up numbers if you're wondering, but I'm trying to use whole numbers rather than um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. I want it to be to a five millimeter increment. Now these lines are too long. How do I shorten these lines so that they intersect properly? Let's look at a few different ways. I could click on the edge of this line and when I click on the edge of this line it'll bring up a little palette. Now the first four tools here are the move commands again. Drag, rotate, mirror, and multiply. I do not want you to use these tools. These are not a good way of working. The only tool that I want you to use in this palette is the last one, the stretch tool. Now when I use this tool I can hold shift if I need to and then I can use my cursor again, my mouse, to find the intersection from the last point. So you see that it changes to a rotated crosshair or to a black pen when I'm intersecting with that line. Holding shift then click and that will stop that line at that point. So I could stretch lines manually. What else could I do? I could trim. So I could use the command or the control tool or I could find that under reshape trim. Control trim and that's going to trim the leftovers 
back to the last point of intersection. What else could I do? Let's go over to the other side. I could select both of these lines and I could use the intersect tool. So that's up on our menu or we could find it edit, reshape, intersect and that's going to trim back the intersecting overhanging lines. It's going to cut the shorter lengths. So if I undo that, control Z, and if one of these lines is too long, and I try to do the same thing, we're going to find it's going to trim the other way. So we have to make sure that we're doing it the right way. Of course, we don't have to have two extending. We can even just have one extending, and that intersect tool will still work. So using this very simple method of very simple tools, we're only using the line tool at the moment, we can draw lines, we can be as precise as we want, or we can just click. And let's just do this quickly now. We can trace. Anything that's on our screen. So I was using numbers before. If I don't care about numbers, I could use references. So if I want to make this line vertical, I can hold shift. But if I want to align it with the other line, while I'm holding shift, moving to the right, you can see that I've now got a dashed line that allows me to make this line at exactly the same length. And this way I can be confident that I'm working consistently. So you can do this as cleanly as you want. I'm about to finish this video, we'll just finish off this column, make sure it's straight. In this case I want to get this bottom part to line up nicely so I'm going to extend these lines through. I could also offset these lines, let's just do that quickly, uh, I'll, I'll use the offset tool later, let's just drag a copy for now, move, drag a copy, just so we've got them parallel, um, let's drag another copy of this line again so we've got these aligned trim them together so now we're tracing the outline of this logo so whether you're using your own logo or you're using a logo that you've got permission to use or you're drawing anything else because of course well, this could be related to architecture we could be drawing it over a detail from a manufacturer it's all the same process we're just using something non-architectural at the moment just to prove a point that Archicad can be used for pretty much anything so try that see how you go and in the next video I'll show you some new tools